Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hi, it's Lindsay DeSwart on Magical Midlife Podcast. Now today, I'm actually flying solo, which I haven't done for a few weeks, so I thought it was about time that I actually had a check-in with you, just with you and me. So here we are. I hope you've really enjoyed the podcast series so far. I've had lots of really interesting guests, and we've got more lined up, which are coming in the next few weeks, so I think you're going to enjoy that. But today, I intended to record a podcast, and then somehow I kind of got rerouted and ended up actually writing a blog instead. And then after I'd written the blog, because I try and keep my blogs pretty short, uh, and it's on Facebook and it's on my website if you would like to take a look at it, I try and keep my blogs pretty short. So afterwards, when I was reading through it, I was like, "Mm, you know what, there's quite a bit that I want to add to that that's come up, that I've seen examples of recently, and I think it's just really, it's a useful reframe on magical midlife, because it makes a massive difference. So I'm kind of working on the principle that if you're listening to this, you are in and around the 40, 50, 60 mark, and in which case you're in the right place. Yay. Um, And so, of course, by the time we've got to this age, we have had some experiences. We've had some um, ups and downs and some of those more traumatic than others. What I really wanted to talk about was the idea of optimism and positive thinking, and how it can only get you so far. Now, in the past, because I've been coaching for 16 years now, and in the past, I've said to people, because you kind of do a you know business review, and you say, well, what are my real talents? What are my skills? What am I most useful for? And people have always said to me, you know, you're a real motivator, you're really positive, you're really optimistic. And while that's true, There is so much kind of depth below that, that I bring in when I coach people and when they are prepared to face kind of the more painful stuff. And the reason this has come up is actually because it's been a challenge for me. So if you read the blog post, you'll find out. If not, I'll give you a very quick summary. Um, So in this last year or so, I've been going through a whole new professional training in shamanic coaching. Now, what that allows you to do is to really dig deep into the energy of problems that you're facing or problems that are making you stuck. And it also allows you then, because in energy, there is no such thing as linear time, it allows you to go way back. So whilst I was going way back with stuff, I was quite resistant. And when I say quite resistant, I mean very resistant to digging any deeper and facing some some stuff that I just thought, I don't really need to go there. And stuff actually on a day-to-day basis, I wasn't really conscious of. But it clearly, it just keeps showing up. Just like if you're carrying a heavy bag, let's say, let's just use it as baggage, okay? If you're carrying a heavy bag and you have to keep stopping because that bag is like weighing you down. If you could see me now, I'm kind of shrugging my shoulders and doing like a handbag, a heavy handbag action on one shoulder. So that bag's weighing you down. And so you have to keep stopping every now and then and you'll change over your bag and you'll change over your shoulder and then you might carry it with your hand and then you might carry it with your other hand. But basically it stops your progress. And that's exactly the same with emotional baggage. And I really remember the first time I went on any sort of personal development, like mega training, it was a full weekend and it was really intense. But it was also really intense because I hadn't done anything like that before. So I went on this training, really, really intense, lots of tears shed. And then when I went to the gym on the Monday morning and I got on the treadmill and I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran like nothing I'd known in memory because I felt so light because I'd actually offloaded some of that baggage because I'd cleared some stuff. And so rather than glossing over stuff and saying, you know, everything's okay. And that's, I'm not saying that's a lie, because everything okay is okay is not a lie by any means. But it means that using reframing and changing perspective, you can absolutely get through a lot more and cover up a lot of stuff, kind of brush it under the carpet, really. 
And so what I found was that when I had the courage, and also when I work with people, when they have the courage to almost lift up the carpet, see what's underneath there, or in the blog post I refer to it as skeletons in the cupboard, you open up the cupboard and you go, whoa, what's in there? It's not stuff that you would know is hindering you because it doesn't come up to you and go, oh, well, actually, you were scared of something when you were two years old and therefore that's really bothering you now when you're 50. It doesn't quite work like that. But what happens, you may already know this, but what happens the way we store our memories and our beliefs about the world is in a situation, let's say you're two, so of course, probably you don't really remember a lot of details about the ins and outs of things going on then. You were faced with a situation and it's not anything that you'd faced before. And so you made a decision in that time. And that decision kind of went into your structure of your thoughts and your belief of what you believe about the world. And the thing is, once that structure's in place, then it moves forward with you. And it doesn't necessarily get updated unless you face that situation again and you actually do something to change the structure of that. I kind of think of it like scaffolding. Unless you actually change that scaffolding structure, that structure stays in place with you. And it will shape how you respond to situations, how you create things and what you believe about the world going forward for years and years and years. So therefore, by the time we're 50, I mean, for example, let's say scared of the dark. Okay, so nobody consciously makes a decision to be scared of the dark. Most people will have got that when they're a child. They've made the decision for whatever reason. Could have been a noise, could have been a scary corner in a bedroom, could have been whatever. They make up their decision that they're scared of the dark. And as adults, they may well still be carrying that belief or a fear of a particular animal or, because, you know, I talk about horses a lot, you know, a fear of horses when you're really little, a horse seems really big. So, you know, quite a few people get their fear of horses because of an experience when they were a kid. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about this experience is something that's so uncomfortable for you as a child, you make a decision. And that decision stays with you. Doesn't mean you're conscious of it, as I said. However, what it also does is it starts to build a barricade around you. So you can call it baggage if you like. So imagine, um, hate to say it if anybody is, because it can't be easy to live with. Imagine that you're actually a hoarder and you hoard stuff in the guise of it protecting you because you think that this particular belief, let's say fear of the dark, this particular belief also shows up as a heavy bag because it prevents you from doing things. It might prevent you from, I don't know, going camping or going walking in the dark or getting better sleep because you like to sleep with the nightlight on until you're a certain age. Anything like that, you can't really pinpoint how it shows up because that sort of thing is so individual. But it's not the sort of thing that you can keep glossing over and it never show up or it never have a repercussion. So that's why I'm talking about this whole thing about, you know, optimism and positive thinking. Sometimes, actually, what you really need to do is to go into the belief and dig out when you made that decision about the world. So when you decided that the dark was scary, and it makes me laugh because there was a a book that I used to read to the kids. um, What's it called? Plop, Plop the Night Owl. And Plop was a baby owl and he was sent out by his parents at nighttime because he thought nighttime was scary and the dark was scary. So he got sent out by his parents in order to go and research all of the good things about the dark and see experiences people were having in the dark and how magical it was and what um, excitement it could offer. So, of course, by the end of the book, Plop the Baby Barn Owl had found all of these lovely experiences and then actually looked forward to going out in the dark, which, of course, is now with their natural time to go and hunt anyway. So that's just the experience of you know, the dog. It could be, as I say, it could be an animal, it could be traveling, it could be a flight, it could be all the sorts of things that we have as rational fears that we'll just write off and try and work around. Those are the sorts of things that when you really dig into them, you can release that baggage. So this is very much what I did in this last year. 
Now, bearing in mind, having done personal development for so many years, I have been on frequent courses and, you know, Tony Robbins fire walking and, you know, some things more crazy than others. So I've released a lot of the baggage that I thought I carried. So when I came into this course this last year, I thought, I'm good. I can just learn the theory and it'll all be fine. But when you're dealing at such a deep level with what, you know, what's energy medicine, shamanic energy, healing work, there is nothing surface level about it. You have got to get down there and you've got to go into those deep, dark places. And so, as I said in my blog, my coach, a lady called Cece, she's known me for a very long time. And thankfully, she pulled me up right at the beginning and said, you cannot continue to gloss over things and to not go into the deep, dark places, the sacred darkness, as she calls it, because there is so much beauty in there and there is so much wisdom in there. So many good things come from being out in the dark. So I guess a bit like uh, Plot the Owl's journey, he went out and he found out that, you know, dark was magical. Dark was when you could have fireworks. Dark was when you could have healing campfires. Simple examples, I know. But she really encouraged me to allow myself to be supported by the other people in the group to go as deep as I needed to go with the healing. And the thing with the shamanic healing is when you go down into the darkness, you you receive visions, you see visions, you see pictures of things, and you see um, almost, you could say, like metaphors of things that are going on and how problems actually show up as a structure. Or and you'll see animals and um, all sorts of, yeah, I mean, just so many different landscapes. It's It's unbelievable. By shutting down that possibility of going into the darkness, all I did was actually prevent myself from going and seeing the truth of what was going on, to see how problems um, were showing up and everything that was associated with that. So, for example, with one of the shamanic techniques, you will go down into you know the lower world, the unconscious mind, the subconscious mind almost. And as you go down into that, some of the images down there can be pretty yucky. And I was always reluctant to go down there and to see, to allow myself to see those really yucky visions. And whether that was for myself or whether it was for somebody I was working with. Yet, what I learned over this last year was as I dug deeper into those dark, dark places, into those yucky visions, was there was always a light that you could shine on those things that would allow them to heal. And actually, the gifts that came from that and the learning that came from that healing was so beautiful and so profound that actually, if I'd resisted going down into those depths, I'd never have got those gifts or that healing. It's a bit like, let's say, you know, you're going down down a dark road or you're going round a long, windy road and it's going round that next corner. And that next corner is where you see the beautiful view. Or you go round, go down that dark road and perhaps actually once you shine your lights on something, you see something absolutely beautiful. That's maybe when you see the nightlife, you see the animals or something looking at back at you. But until you're willing to go there, if you stayed in your house all the time, you wouldn't see it. So that's really what the blog post was about today and what I wanted to share with you today on this, this flying solo podcast because I really urge you and encourage you to resist trying to gloss over stuff. Resist trying to fix problems at a surface level because that's not where they're created. It literally is like trying to polyfiller over the cracks and of course that never builds a solid foundation. If you only filled over the cracks you can't build high tall beautiful structures but it doesn't have that same depth of creativity and of exploration and of adventure. So I, as I say, I really urge you to take some time and whether you do it through journaling or whether you work with somebody to do it or whether you start doing some reading about techniques. I mean, things like Louise Hay, How to Heal Your Life is a great place to start. 
or even beyond that, if you want to go a bit deeper, you can do Matt, like Marianne Williamson. I'm just looking on my bookshelf to see what other sort of books are on there. Eckhart Tolle and Tony Robbins, actually, if you're quite action focused, Tony Robbins is a good one to dig down to try and find, yeah, to identify, I guess, what's causing your blockages, what's causing, causing problems that keep showing up in life. Because if you see them that they are that bag that you have to keep stopping to rearrange and to carry in a more comfortable way, then that really hinders your progress. So as we enter into this time, like as we enter into this time, which is more about healing and more about the feminine energy really rising in its strength, the feminine energy tends to thrive in the darkness and tends to you know go down into the emotions but yet comes up into the glory and the enjoyment of everything that we are as women so we don't need to gloss over stuff anymore we don't need to look as if we're coping with everything and everything is sunny and rosy and shiny because let's face it we know it's not always that way don't be afraid to talk to your good friends Don't be afraid to seek help if you know that there's a problem that just keeps persisting. There's no reason for you to be held back by that anymore. We are in such a magical time and things are changing so fast that I really encourage you to, yeah, just to to get past the optimism, actually. That's really what it is, to grow up through the positive thinking and be brave enough and find that courage within you to find a deeper solution, to go in and do some healing. I remember the first time that I heard a local shamanic healer here, and she was always posting about, you know, healing journey, uh, healing journeys, healing ceremonies. And I just, I kind of couldn't get my head around how much healing needed to be done until I really understood that actually there was so much healing to be done and not only just for her but for her heritage for her family for her indigenous culture there was so much healing to be done for her ancestors and then of course as you do that then you pass it on you pass on that healing for your children so healing is at such especially at an energetic level it is such a large um concept and I know at a surface level, it can be a little bit difficult to listen to or to kind of grasp. But trust me when I say that it's really worth scratching the surface and digging that little bit deeper to see what gold you find underneath there. Because I promise you, I promise, promise you that you will find absolute gems of gold within there and it will really help you as you move forward with whether it's a problem, whether it's a new task, whether it's a ongoing issue you know like you've fallen out with somebody or relationships with your family or finances or something there is such gold for you when you start really digging down deep whatever methods you need to get there obviously I'm always available to help and to coach if that's something you wanted to do just check out my website soulfuladventureliving.com but more than anything find somebody or resources that can really help you heal all sorts of, you know, whether this is affecting your happiness level, your mental health level, or just your standard of living. I promise you that now is such a powerful time to do this healing. So I really urge you to do that. I'm not going to go on anymore. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I know it's a little bit different than normal, but it felt like the right thing to do. And please go and check out my blog as well. That's on the Soulful Adventure Living website and over on Facebook on Lindsay DeSwart and Soulful Adventure. And please, if this has been helpful to you, share it with your friends, post a comment, let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode with another exciting and very uplifting guest. So take it easy. Have a great day. Bye.